Hey kids, thanks for joining me in the garage again. Uh, today we're going to be converting the Forerunner here from uh, rear drum brakes over to disc brakes. There's a kit that became available recently. They have pretty much all the hardware you need for it in this kit. So it'll set up pretty much any of the third gen Forerunners. Uh, let's go over all the parts and whatnot and we'll, we'll get to wrenching here. Got a big box of parts we have to go through. In the Summit Racing Catalog. See you in just a minute. As you can see here, I've got everything laid out for this uh, rear axle disc brake conversion. And so um, you've got, you know, the brackets that hold the calipers and then some spacers that kind of space them a little bit so that uh, they fit over the disc brake properly. And then uh, you also, uh, you know, with, with my kit, you can choose optionally to get some hard lines uh, for, to replace your factory ones. Um, ultimately, my goal is to be able to uh, potentially convert back to this, although uh, doing the parking brake uh, conversion as well it excludes that essentially. But um, as you'll see, um, you can uh, re you know get a uh, factory replacement for the parking brake line. So comes with all the hardware you need. It's got, even got uh, some uh, blue Loctite for you as well. Uh, you know that's really nice, really complete kit. Um, also, uh, it comes with the rear parking brake conversion as well as hardware for that. And then, uh, you know, you can order brake lines as well. You can get your own brake lines. You know, a couple of the things, you know, the parking brake conversion as well as the uh, factory replacement hard lines and the soft lines are all optional. I went ahead and got the complete kit. That way I can just do it all in one fell swoop. And essentially I can convert back to drum brakes if the occasion arises. Now, that gives you everything that you need for the kit. Uh, on top of the kit, you of course need calipers, discs, and pads. So you have to get those separately. So I just get, to, you know, I got brake best brake pads. And then the uh, discs are for a fourth gen Forerunner. Um, that way the bolt pattern is all the same. You don't have to uh, get new wheels. Uh, that would be even bigger pain in the butt. And then you've got the actual calipers. So the calipers that uh, this kit uses are off of a I mean, 98, I believe, to 2004 Ford Mustang GT Cobra. If I'm wrong on the year, I'll just put that down below. So the, the thing that's essential with these is that your uh, bracket, the caliper bracket, has this little cross member, I suppose. And so uh, there's some other, uh, you know, Mustang calipers, obviously, um, that do not have these. And so the uh, model year and then also the trim is very important to make sure you get these proper brackets. Uh, that's essentially the entire kit. So, you know, to do the conversion, uh, obviously you're gonna need to pull the axle. And so there, there's a couple of ways of doing that. And what I chose to do is go a bit of the extreme route and so as you can essentially you know you pull your axle out it essentially looks like this obviously i've pulled the bearing retainers the abs since they're all off um, but from here if you did not want to do that and replace your bearings and and all of that stuff you can essentially at this point this be all connected and you could just you know pound out these because you're going to end up replacing them that makes this uh you know the, the backing plate for your drums essentially free. And so from here, you can just slice this off in a couple of spots and then remove it. Now, what I've chosen to do is completely press everything out. That way, essentially, my backing plate is intact and I don't have to, you know, um, you know, because these backing plates are, are kind of hard to get and expensive if you can buy them. Um, you know, mine's not rusty. Um, you know, if I ever decided to go back to uh, rear drum brakes, I could essentially just flap everything back on uh, with the exception of the parking brake. Since when you do the parking brake conversion, you'll have to snip your parking brake cable. So that's essentially the two options you have, you know, basically pressing everything out or slicing your backing plate open. 
You know, um, a couple of things to note about this. So th there's been a lot of controversy and a little bit of discussion on whether it's a disc brakes in the rear are needed. Um, a lot of people who 4x4 a lot ha have found that mud and rocks and all sorts of stuff get caked up in the drum. And you know, that can cause braking to be really bad. Discs eliminate all that. Now, one of the, the things that this conversion kit does not have is backing a backing plate to kind of protect those brakes. But you're not gonna get mud stuck in the, in the drum. You're not gonna get dirt, um, you know, any of that stuff. It should just float right off of these discs. And so as far as stopping power, you know, uh, people have done this conversion uh, a couple of times now. Their butt dyno essentially says that, you know, it feels better. You know, there's no scientific evidence yet. I know the uh, person who's putting out these brackets has said that they're going to be doing some tests, some actual official testing um, that has yet to come out. So we'll see what happens when that does. And so um, if you want to know how to pull these axles out, make sure to check out my rear axle seal uh, video. I'll put that a little link up there. And then also down in the description below, I'll have a link to where you could potentially buy this kit. There's, there's not a whole lot of them out there, but um, once they do become available again, um, you know, I expect them to go pretty quickly. So let's get to work on the truck. Here we are uh, down at the axle. And so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get this smaller 30 millimeter flange bolt in there. And one thing to keep in mind, you will want to kind of clearance this. You can kind of see there, did a little bit of clearancing. That way it fits uh, nice and flush uh, on the, the flange there. And so uh, keep that in mind when you're doing this. You might want to take a grinder if you've got a grinding wheel, bench grinder, something along that line, you can do that. And so uh, get your uh, axle uh, bearing cup in there. Put that uh, 30 millimeter bolt down in the the front lower position, and then go ahead and spin a nut on there. Uh, now I'm doing this uh, just as an example. We're gonna get the, uh, the uh, axle flange and the axle in there here in a minute. And so when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna use the thread locker that's provided in the kit. It gives you, you know, a good quantity of that to be able to, to put on your nuts when you're tightening these down. So the next thing is to uh, get the longer 40 millimeter bolts and those don't have the thread all the way down. That's how you can tell the difference. You're gonna go ahead and place those in there. Get all uh, the other three. And then once you've got those three in there, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put your uh, washers on there. This will help the uh, conversion brackets sit flat on the back of the axle flange there. And so uh, next is to get your uh, conversion bracket. And then that goes on. Basically, uh, you've got the, the three holes here and they'll kind of fit over your ABS sensor. So you'll just kind of make sure you got it oriented in the right position there. Slide that slowly over those bolts. Make sure they're all in there and then uh, get your bolts on the back side. This point again, you know, I'm doing this as an example without the axle in there. Um, at this point, you'd want to go ahead and put some thread locker on there before you tighten these down. So we'll get these nuts on real quick. These are 14 millimeter nuts. There we are. And before you get them all tightened down, you're going to want to kind of pull the conversion bracket uh, up and to the back in kind of a diagonal. That way you give yourself a little more clearance. We're gonna be bolting the calipers onto these two holes and that'll give you a little more clearance. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pushing on the bottom one and the upper one, and then just gonna hand tighten these to get it kind of locked in place. And then I'll get a wrench on it. All right. Now, like I said, I don't have thread lockers on these. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna get the uh, axle flange in here. I'm gonna get thread locker on that and then these get torqued to 48 foot pounds. So to do that, we'll have a little bit of video magic here. So three, two, one, and there we go. Now everything's torqued down. I got thread locker on these, torqued down to 48 foot pounds. 
And so that's the bracket and the axle all installed. Next thing is to get the actual uh, caliper bracket installed on this conversion bracket. So what you end up doing here is this spacer goes on the inside and then these larger bolts, uh, M14 bolts, go in from behind. And then your caliper bracket then, you know, fits like this. Uh, before we get that on though, we want to put the uh, the actual brake rotor on. That way we can uh, then get everything torqued down for the spacer and the caliper bracket. So we'll put our disc on here now. And I'm going to use a couple of lug nuts here to kind of keep it in position. So again, that spacer is uh, between the brake rotor and the conversion bracket. Then we'll set this in here and uh, start getting it screwed down. You also want to use thread locker on these bolts. These are 16 millimeter bolts, they're uh, M14s. So as you get this tightened, you're going to want to pull up this direction. That way you make sure this caliper bracket again has as much clearance as possible. And then uh, once again, you know, I'm just doing this to show you exactly how this gets put together, but you'll want to put thread locker on these two bolts back here, and then those get torqued to uh, 85 foot pounds. So I'm gonna get that done now, and then we'll put the actual caliper and brake pads on. All right, as you can see, we got the bracket installed. I got everything locked tighted and torqued down. Again, that's 85 foot pounds on those uh, bracket bolts on the back there. So the next thing is to actually get the caliper onto the caliper bracket. And so before you do that, you're gonna wanna grease up the area that the pads ride on. There's this front and then also this back area here. And so you're just gonna wanna dab a little bit of grease in that area. You know, try not to get it on the disc as well. Don't really need a lot, but you do want to make sure, you know, this will help prevent it from squealing. Now we can put the pads on. Pads have these little springs on them, and so those go up. So if we, uh, you know, one in the front, one in the rear. There we go. And then for the caliper, on the caliper, there's this little spring clip here. So, uh, oops, I have it kind of in place. So um, the way this works, you can kind of see there's this, this raised edge goes up. So the caliper is situated like this. And so this raised part comes up through and then these parts hook in there. So you come up through, the long tongue part comes out there and then that hooks onto the, the back there. So then once you have that spring clipped in, you can then get this slid over and get the bolts put in the sliding pins here. You have to press down to get those uh, springs on the pads to uh, kind of separate a little bit. Uh, these two sliding pin bolts get torqued down to 23 foot pounds and then you're all set. Next thing we got to do is get the brake lines on, and so we'll go under the truck now and get those done. All right, the brake lines here. Um, we've got, uh, you know, I've already taken off one clip when I was pulling the axles out. There's another clip here, a clip here, and again, I've taken this one out, but there's also a clip right here. We need to get those removed to uh, start getting these brake lines out. And then I'm also going to start uh, taking off the uh, emergency brake line here, the parking brake, uh, because we're also going to be replacing that. So I believe that is a 14 millimeter. All right, now we've got these brake lines. Um, next thing is to uh, get your, and you're probably not going to be able to see that with the uh, the uh, track bar in here or the pan hard and uh, these are 10 millimeter flare nuts just like on the ends uh, that go into the old brake cylinders and you'll want to be ready because uh, these are going to be full of brake fluid and uh, 
potentially gonna be making a mess here. And I've got a little plug here. It should at least stem the flow some. Get this other side off. All right, manage not to get it too much everywhere. Looks like those plugs are gonna do their job. All right. So the next thing is uh, to get these new brake lines in. So the difference with these new brake lines, and I'll show you here, is that, uh, you know, I got the, the kit with the new brake lines. That way I wouldn't have to create these uh, bend, you know, cut my old lines in order to uh, achieve this bend here that it's got. You can kind of see if you put them up here side by side, you would essentially have to cut your brake line in here uh, in order to do uh, what the included brake lines or you know, these are actually extra, but you could cut up your uh, factory brake lines into this pattern. But I chose to go ahead and get new lines. And so uh, let's go ahead and we want to remove the little brackets off of your old lines here so that uh, they kind of separate here. Let me grab a little flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry the two pieces apart there. But they just come apart just like that. And then we can grab the new brake line on there. You see one will go right there and then one will go up on the other end. All right, now we can go ahead and get this in here back in place. So looks like I'm seeping some more brake fluid here. too much but you do want to get it good and snug so that you have a good connection all right there we are first one is in and then uh, we do the same thing on the other side here and that looks all buttoned up and ready to go the next thing to do is to get the banjo bolts on either caliper here and then we can start believing the system Back over the brake caliper, last thing to do is get the uh, brake line in and then the banjo bolt. Now, um, I've actually uh, had to come and order these. The calipers did not come with these. And so these are a brake best part, the part number is H9479-2. And so um, these will fit the Mustang calipers. They're a thread, they're an M10 sized bolt with a 1.5 thread pitch. Let's pull those out. And so these banjo bolts come with little copper washers. And uh, just to note, the kit actually comes with two copper, well, four copper washers, two for each side, but this uh, banjo bolt will come with those. So the assumption is that you get a uh, pair of used calipers, you know, maybe from a junkyard. Um, so the banjo bolt ends up coming with that. Like I said, these replacements, these are power stops. Um, you'll see the in the description, the part number. Um, they did not come with a banjo bolt. So pretty simple here. Get your brake line, put one of these washers on, put it through the brake line, and then put your other washer on the other side. And how this is gonna go is the uh, brake line is gonna kinda go 
uh, off in an angle up because the hard line, as you can see, uh, is just going to sit right there to where you can get this soft line onto it. So let's get this down, get it screwed on here real quick. So you can see now, you know, this will just go right down onto that hard line. So the torque specs for this banjo bolt is 29 foot pounds, the 10 millimeter nut. That's on there. And then uh, now it's time to get this hard line and the soft line connected. So one thing you're gonna wanna do, obviously this is gonna start dripping immediately when I take this little plug out. So I've got a few rags I'm gonna throw down below here. Just to catch some of that mess. We'll get our 17 millimeter wrench and then a 10 millimeter line wrench. So this line wrench will go on the, for the hard line. The 17 millimeter fits on the soft line. So we'll pull this plug and just start it by hand here. And get your 17 millimeter wrench and your line wrench on it. You just want to get it snug. You don't want to really crank too hard on it but just enough so that it'll stop dripping. And you're of course gonna wanna wipe as much of this brake fluid off as you can get here. And there we are. All right, so uh, let's go back over the bench and uh, we'll wrap this up. All right, so we've got the discs and the calipers on. Got that drum brake uh, dust shield pulled off as well. That's probably the most difficult part of this uh, since you have to pull the axle out. So only thing left to do is to bleed the brakes, uh, which I've got, I got a video here on bleeding the rear brakes. Um, they're not drum brakes anymore, but the bleeding process is essentially the same. So check that video out if you don't know how to bleed your brakes. Uh, the next video, part two, I suppose, is gonna be a parking brake conversion bracket installation for this kit. You can actually, get the parking brake kit separately uh, from the disc conversion. And so I think it uh, deserves its own video. So hit that thumbs up if you like what you saw. If you're here for the first time and you're just checking out the channel, consider subscribing. You can always follow me on Instagram at Weekend Wrench Center. Thanks for watching. Keep on wrenching.